Hello everyone, I've uh, been asked to reply to this video uh, and it's pretty long and uh, let me see if I can uh, increase the speed or something. It's gonna be a darn long video then. That our planet provides. Each hour, three species disappear. Each day, 10,000 people die from water shortage or contamination. 14 billion pounds of garbage are dumped into the ocean every year. Most of it's plastic, and it'll take nearly 1,000 years for it to degrade. And due to global warming, the Arctic may be ice-free, and thousands of cities, including New York City, may be underwater. Now, you've all undoubtedly heard many of these statistics before, and likely, at least so far, you aren't impressed. <laughs> And yet still, in some sense, these facts turn societal platitudes motivate us. They certainly motivate me, and I, perhaps like many of you, am the typical environmentalist. I gleefully present my refillable cup to the Starbucks barista. I love to shop at Trader Joe's, and I always bring my Go Green bag. And if you're anything like me, I spend one to two minutes in a fit of confusion trying to recycle the fork bowl, napkin, and food that constitutes my salad. And while my New Yorker instinct is to avoid eye contact with an over-eager, sidewalk-soliciting environmentalist, I proudly flash them a smile. Uh, okay, this is really strange. I don't know where he's going with this. Simply to remind them that I support what they do. Oh. <laughs> and as I reflect on my eco-friendly day, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> knowing I made a difference. Okay. And I know what you're thinking. You could do so much more. Indeed. And you'd be right. I could do a lot more. Yeah? I could compost, yeah. and I don't. <laughs> I could okay. walk to work through yeah. Central Park, and I don't. <laughs> and as one environmental campaign suggested, I could get clean and save water by sharing with a friend or even an attractive stranger. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, unreasonable. <laughs> Don't get too excited for me. I shower alone, often for many minutes at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly, we all could do more. But what if I told you that I did make a more difficult sacrifice for our planet? Oh. What if I told you that I am a vegan? Oh, really? He is. Did you feel that? Is he kidding them? You did. One word. And everyone gets a little bit nervous. No, like, like the, the way he looked at them was like, is he vegan? You can be honest with me. This is TEDx. It's a safe space. You feel a little awkward. Why? <laughs> well, because people actually have some deep feeling within themselves that maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I'm trying to um, live blind to it. And therefore, it feels a little bit uncomfortable when people point out that somebody made choices that are, uh, what can I say, uh, better than themselves. Because I am a vegan, and presumably many of you are not? It's a little bit more what than that. What is that about? <laughs> well, we've all had that conversation before. You're out to dinner with a friend or a colleague, and you learn that the person you're with is a vegan. You had no idea. You're surprised. And while the person in front of you may not look like this, <laughs> or like this, your okay. perception of them has immediately changed. Yeah, PETA is, has basically turned into a total nonsense organization the last few years. Sorry to say so. There is no going back to whatever it was you thought of them before this moment. Now, back at dinner, the vegan likely feels compelled to explain to you that while he or she is a vegan, by no means did your culinary decision inspire offense. You, in turn, decide to kindly acknowledge that reconciling gesture. The only time that I don't want to be... Thymer. The only time that I don't want to be talking about veganism is actually when I'm eating with other people. If there's not food on the table, I'm freely open to talk about veganism. That's the one time that I don't want it, but it's the one time that everyone else wants to talk to me about veganism and attempt to very quickly move the conversation along to a more unifying topic. And yet, 
you still feel whatever it is you or your neighbor might be feeling right now. A tinge of nervousness, a pulse of discomfort, the manifestation of a mouth twinge or the eyes widening. There is me, and then there's you. And somehow, our perception of one another is no longer the same. Well, as it turns out... Well, always it's like that. It's like in any, any group, like if someone says they're a feminist, then all of a sudden things will change. I'm not a vegan. Ha! I knew it. I'm sorry to all the vegans in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I actually saw through you. But if I if I bought it, then it's like, wow, he uh, he didn't have a um, have a uh, an ethical standard at all. Um, after all, who have lost one of their own. <laughs> and to the rest of you, well, you can safely take a deep sigh of relief knowing that I am a carnivore just like you. Uh, okay. So you actually. Um are actually contributing to the suffering and death of other species. But whatever connotations are in the word vegan, and the experiences those connotations create in our mind, I am absolutely fascinated by them. Uh, but they are changing. Like, uh, people don't think of a hippie anymore when they see a vegan. Like, slowly, when more and more people are going vegan, people are being more comfortable with uh, veganism being around. And more and more people are both uh, decreasing the amount of animal products they are consuming, and more and more people are going vegan. And think they may hold, at least in part, a key to solving complex problems like global warming and the loss of biodiversity. Nah. Now, semantics aside for just a moment. Well, it is a very um, good thing that vegans are better at it, but it's not what veganism is about. It's about the ethical treatment of animals. We all know that vegans and vegetarians, the modern day pioneers of abstaining from meat, are onto something, even if we ourselves choose to eat eggs and meat. We know our planet is in trouble, and we know that meat production, from the clearing of land and trees to the transportation of these products, accounts for nearly 20% of global greenhouse gas. Well, 20%, that is... Uh... Um, it's on the mids there. The lowest I've seen is 14.5. Uh, it goes up to the uh, 51%, but it's a little bit um, disputed up there. Gas emissions. 20%. Yeah, and that's not even counting all the waste that is uh, within and also the amount of uh, rainforest you have to cut down and so on. A species extinction is a big one. That is why a vegetarian's footprint is nearly half that of a meat lover's. Uh, it's, uh, way below, actually. And for a vegan, it's even lower. Yeah, and it's even, if you look, uh, apart from only, uh, the, uh, carbon emissions, there's way more things than just the carbon that animal agriculture is responsible for. And we also <clears throat> know that meat production requires a lot of water. Yeah. Producing just one pound of meat protein requires ten times the amount of water as producing one pound of grain protein. It's a lot of water. Not only that, but it's uh, <clears throat> the water that is used there is automatically contaminated uh, due to like it's been uh, drank, uh, peed out, uh, washed off. Well, a lot of dirt is gonna come off the cattle, you see. <laughs> and we also know, perhaps most morally salient, that due to factory farming, that animals are not treated very well. Yes, and this is the point I want to make. So why are you not vegan? They're not. And they are incredibly smart and experience pain just like us. I would use sentience as an example. Uh, being, being smart or intelligent doesn't tell you if you're sentient or not. So as we look into the eyes of this very adorable baby pig, we have to ask ourselves, why do over 90% of Americans continue to eat meat? It's bizarre, right? But no, it's because they've uh, grown up with it, and a cultural shift is needed. Bacon! <laughs> Bacon is the reason we eat meat. Yeah, uh, sort of. Uh, not so much anymore, because there are so many convincing uh, meat replacements. For many, the mere smell of bacon in the morning, that crispy, crunchy texture, that savory, salty taste, they give us a reason to smile. That spicy buffaloing, that juicy steak, 
They are the reason we eat meat. They satisfy our most primal urges. So what should we do? Yeah, uh, eat something else and be introduced to other food items that are just as tasty, maybe? Well, on the one hand, we know that meat gives us reason to smile in the morning. And on the other, we know it straddles our instinct. It is a class one carcinogen. Why should you smile about eating it? Sorry. <laughs> to uphold our sense of morality with its questionable impact on the planet. Plus, as some of the medical literature suggests, meat may not be very healthy for us. Mm, not at all. Well, certainly we could treat each meal as a choice. Yeah, but there's somebody else in the equation that didn't have the right to choose. Either to indulge or to make a more restrained decision. What what's on the um what's on the grill here? It's it, it was an individual, or maybe multiple individuals. It, it, this could be be uh, four different individuals right here. Uh, if you eat this, there aren't any individuals. Plants aren't sentient, so that's what you should be eating. We could simply eat less meat and more fruits and vegetables. That seems simple enough. Yeah, it's really simple. And as many have suggested, if we simply followed a meatless Monday diet, whereby we abstain from eating meat on Mondays, We'd have a billion vegetarians overnight. Well, I am not sold on that one. Uh, so is it okay to kill six times a week instead of seven? I don't think so. And that would be huge. But what is a person who eats less meat? They may not be a vegetarian. or uh, They go under the um, category of flexitarian, actually. Uh, they got other names as well. Or vegan, or even on any particular diet. Where do they fall along this spectrum? Well, I've discovered that there are a few words, each with their own connotations, to describe a person who eats less meat. You could say, I'm a semi-vegetarian. I sometimes eat... A semi-vegetarian uh, is basically the same thing as a uh, flexitarian. Eat meat, and sometimes I don't. You could say... I'm a mostly vegetarian. Uh, that is just a silly term, to be honest. I mostly eat fruits and vegetables. I sometimes eat meat, but I try not to eat a lot of it. Or you could say, and this one's by far my favorite, okay, that okay. I'm a flexitarian. I'm flexible about it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I eat meat, and sometimes I don't. Uh, no, flexitarians are basically people who live uh, pre pre predominantly uh, vegetarian, but on occasions when they're served meat or uh, they don't have any uh, other options available to them at that certain time, then they go for the uh, the meat option. That is the uh, the uh, um, that is what, what flexitarian means. So imagine we're back at dinner, and the person you're with has just explained to you that he or she is a vegan, and you decide to enthusiastically share that you get it. I'm a flexitarian. That is so not helping. I just feel them so far apart, and I'll get to that. I'll just look at this. I'm flexible about it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's so silly. I sometimes eat meat, and sometimes I don't. Okay, uh, I sometimes rape women, and sometimes I don't. I s totally get your message. But I try not to eat a lot of it. Oh, yeah, I, um, I, I, um... I uh, don't rape too often. I just, I just want to want to feel the inside of uh, of that vagina. And as you continue to eat your steak, and he or she continues to eat her vegetable quinoa bowl, you realize, perhaps unconsciously, that you still fall somewhere different along this moral landscape. Yeah, you're being inconsistent about an uh, ethical dilemma. Well, we know with simple intuition. That flexitarian sounds, well, flexible. <laughs> that by choosing to eat meat sometimes, as opposed to never eating meat, you alter your moral standards for primal urges and convenience. Yeah. It's weak. <laughs> nah, it's just contradicting. And it's inconsistent. Inconsistent it is, but more than inconsistent is, uh, yeah, anyways. And as we know from advances in cognitive science, the brain does not do well with inconsistencies. No, but this is more than an inconsistence. Uh, I mean, like it—it it is a—it um, is a contradiction. 
It loves false dichotomies. Oh, I'm against uh, murdering, so I'm just murdering a little. That is basically what that means. And neat compartmentalizations. And we can see how this plays out. One minute, you're a noble lover of all forms of life. And the next, you're a ravenous animal. Yeah, that was exactly what I, what I said. Or at least ravenously eating one. So whatever it is about words like flexitarian and vegan, we know they conjure entirely different perceptions of who we are. Now, saying vegan is just the same thing as saying that um, I'm against slavery. Then I'm not having a little bit slavery on the side. And that these perceptions matter. These seemingly innocuous labels to describe our eating choices matter a great deal. Yeah, but there's somebody in the equation that didn't have a choice. They determine how seriously we are taken, how our messages are understood, and our feeling of belonging. Consider a related example, climate change versus global warming. Scientifically, they have different meanings. One yeah. refers to climate, while the other temperature alone. But regardless of what they actually mean, they conjure different mental associations. A 2014 study from Yale University found that the term global warming was associated with greater public understanding, more emotional engagement, and support for personal and collective action than the term climate change. Global warming generates more intense worries and negative reactions than climate change. That is why I try to use the phrase global warming more than climate change. Uh, I mean, I use the term vegan instead of plant-based, although pe some people may think that uh, the word plant-based is better. So we see the same type of problem with words like flexitarian and semi-vegetarian. They all describe incredibly positive steps toward a more sustainable planet. No, they uh, describe less bad ethical uh, choices but they largely invoke negative associations, feelings of division, and moral incompatibility. It is, because being a flexitarian is not ethical. Veganism is not ethically good, it's just ethically neutral. So it occurred to me, we need a word that describes a community of individuals who are committed to reducing their consumption of meat. If I said that we need a word for serial killers that just decided that, oh, I'm just going to kill a couple of people here, would you be okay with that? I don't think so. And can encourage others to reduce their consumption of cows, chickens, pigs, lambs, and seafood. So why do some of them uh, don't... Well, why, why do some of them have to die... Like, like I, d I just don't see the, uh, the ethical framing here. It is my hope that this word is reducitarian and that it can okay. inspire a community of individuals to simply eat less meat. Okay, so uh, I need to readjust the name the trait argument. So let's see. What is it that is true of an animal that if true of a human would justify us needlessly killing humans once in a while. And I bet many of you here today are already reducitarians. <laughs> How many of you try to eat less meat? You are all reducitarians already. Not everybody does that. Some, some say that they want to eat more meat. And to my vegan and vegetarian friends, you too are reducitarians. No, I am an animal abol abolitionist. I'm not a vegetarian. I have zero tolerance for the uh, needless exploitation and killing of, uh, of other beings. Because you are so very much committed to reducing your consumption. No, there's not, no re reduction here. We shouldn't be doing it. Of meat. Reducitarianism is the practice of reducing one's personal consumption of meat. Red meat seafood, and poultry. Why eat it at all? Now, reducitarians may still enjoy the taste of meat or are not concerned with making a drastic lifestyle change, but they are committed to reducing their consumption of meat nonetheless. With more fruits and veggies, reducitarians live longer, healthier, and happier lives. 
and vegans have the uh, best overall health outcome of any people group, so why shouldn't you do that if you care about your health? They set manageable and therefore actionable goals to gradually reduce their meat consumption. For example, they may order a smaller steak, or skip eating meat for dinner if they had it for lunch, or simply eat meat only on the weekends. So on weekends, it's okay to kill, but in the midst of the week, it's not okay? I just, oh, oh, I only rape women in on weekends, so I'm way better than other rapists. And reducitarians know that by choosing to eat less meat, they're not only going to improve themselves and the environment, but farm animals as well. That is the point I make. Like, would you make the same case in a human context? No, you wouldn't. So why do you accept this in an animal context? Now, the concept of reducitarianism is appealing because not everyone is able or willing to follow a completely vegetarian diet. This is a difficult but important realization. And some people aren't willing to stop raping. Not everyone is able or willing to follow a completely vegetarian. Oh, somebody aren't able, that is false. Uh, last time I also sh uh, showed you on the screen uh, of that uh, paper from the uh, American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics that basically says that everyone can follow a vegan diet. And diet. A Gallup poll conducted in 2012 asked a diverse group of Americans the following question. In terms of your eating preference, do you consider yourself to be a vegetarian or not? Uh, yeah, and I know that there have been some conflicting um, uh, data on there because some people have been lying about being a vegetarian and such, but yeah, let's see. How would you respond? I would say uh, I'm not vegetarian, I'm vegan. What do you think they found? Well, what they found was that on average, only 5% of Americans consider themselves to be a vegetarian. When was this? But what was so interesting about this 5% is that it remained largely unchanged from the 6% that was recorded in 1999 and 2001. Uh, there definitely weren't that many uh, vegetarians around in the United States uh, at that time. In other words, the amount of vegetarians in the United States has remained about the same. That is so false. Especially among the vegan community, the amount of uh, vegans and vegetarians are actually increasing worldwide. Extremely low. And as you might imagine, this percentage is even lower for vegans. Uh, yeah, there are more vegetarians than vegans. But uh, if you have been engaging in the uh, vegan community, you would have seen that every single year there is more availability. There are more people you meet who are vegan. Just... There is no way that veganism isn't growing, and I've even seen other papers suggesting something else than you are suggesting. Similar statistics have been observed throughout the world. Uh, if you look at different, you will find different results. And just in case you aren't convinced, a separate study found that among those who consider themselves to be a vegetarian, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Some of them uh, were actually not uh, vegetarian at all. I know this. Nearly two-thirds of them had indicated that they recently eaten meat. Yeah, that is uh, a huge problem. When they were asked to recall their diet. But there are other ways to um, know how much uh, vegetarianism or veganism is growing. And it's basically to research the amount of Google search. <laughs> These individuals were not vegetarians or vegans. Well, a lot of them were. They were reducitarians, but they were forced to play mental gymnastics with themselves without a word to describe who they are. It's really easy, yes or no. Do you consume any animal products? Uh, yes. Okay, then you're not vegetarian. I mean, sorry, then you're not vegan. Well, are you, are you consuming meat? Uh, yes. Okay, then you're not vegetarian. It's really easy. And this used to happen to me all the time. My friends and family knew that I was a vegetarian. And once in a while, we would go out to eat. I'd order bacon with my eggs and pancakes. And they would literally catch me in the act red-handed. Yes, because then you're not vegetarian. Eating a slice of bacon. <laughs> Do you know what it's like for a Jewish vegetarian to be caught eating bacon? It's Jewish. <laughs> cool. <laughs>
That is a double whammy no one wants to experience with their morning coffee. <laughs> so look, what I think this oh, well. means is that even though we know it would be better. Uh, by the way, every, every single food item that is vegan is kosher automatically. More healthy and environmentally friendly. If everyone just stopped eating meat. Well, it would reduce the amount of rape so if just every rapist raped a little bit less. This is an ideal, a romantic ideal, that we have been unable to achieve. No, veganism is growing. And it, I think that when I looked at the numbers and I equated this, that if veganism is growing in this speed, we all could be vegans in 60 years. This message of completely eliminating meat consumption has worked very well, or somewhat well. It has worked very well and it keeps working, but we haven't reached the goal yet. It is the fastest growing, um, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, not civil rights, um, most growing um, social justice movement in history. For the individuals who are vegetarians or vegans, but has failed to capture the attention of the rest of us. And of course it has reached the people that has become vegan. Those people who haven't become vegan, oh, they haven't become vegan. The 95% of us who continue to inhabit this planet. Uh, well, actually, uh, it's, it's easy to reach more people. It's just more people need to be able to open their mind and uh, get more information out there. So yes, reducitarianism is a message for the 95% of us. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't go on and tell people to be reducitarians because it is not a consistent uh, position to have. We should consider eating less meat for the sake of our health and the environment. Okay. And we can learn a lot from vegans. And well, I can, I can agree that you could do well uh, if you only think about uh, the environment and your health. But when it comes to ethics... I don't see how you can make the case for uh, reducitarianism. Vegetarians, who have so admirably reduced their meat consumption that they effectively eat none at all. Yeah, but they're still consuming eggs and dairy, which are even more cruel industries than the meat industry. But vegans and vegetarians can also learn a great deal from those who simply strive to eat less meat. How am I supposed to learn from people that I should eat something once in a while? In many ways, the use of categorical imperatives. Okay, he's going there. That we must never eat meat. Yeah, it, it is the uh, absolute best thing. Like, I wouldn't have it any other way when it came to killing or rape. Has put vegans and vegetarians and those who simply strive to eat less meat in a boxing match for moral superiority. You know, it is me up against the neo-Nazis. It's me and them. It's me against the rapists. It's me and them. I don't want to be associated with people doing wrong actions. It's exhausting. Well, sorry, sorry. I don't want to be um, associated with the acts of people who do something wrong. Sorry. And as the data suggests, largely unproductive. <laughs> it isn't... I mean... People are going vegan left and right in this day and age. I don't know what you're talking about. Reducitarianism is a message that allows us to focus not on our differences, but on our shared commitment to eating less meat. Do you think this is actually more effective? So many times when I tell people that I'm vegan, they say, oh, but I believe way more in reducing my amount. And the people that say this, they don't reduce their amount regardless of where we fall along the spectrum. I believe that this reducitarian message will absolutely terrify the meat industry because <laughs> it, it is a message. If it worked, yeah, but rather push forward veganism because that is the only ethical position to have. No, sorry, it's the only ethical neutral position to have. ...that will produce the greatest impact on the causes we all care so deeply about. No. It is just putting forward something that is slightly less bad. After all, what could possibly matter more? Yeah, uh, maybe not causing the suffering and death of others? Than the increased well-being of our health and the environment. Uh, yeah, well, that, that are important um, parts there, but 
I would rather say that we're more in, more consistent with giving others the rights to life, actually. It is my hope that we can leverage reducitarian, a positive and inclusive term of moral worth. It's not a positive, it's just slightly less negative. To encourage ourselves and others to eat less meat, improving the health, improving our health and the environment, and making a lot of animals very happy in the process. Oh yeah, yeah, we can make a lot of them, but not everyone. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that some of these children are really happy by me not raping them. It starts with us, all of us, to encourage ourselves and others to simply eat less meat. What about not at all? Why can't you do it? Why can't you do it? Why won't you do it? So this is my message to you. Consider eating less meat this week and be a reducitarian. You can change the world by ordering a smaller steak or doing something more. But don't just sit by and ignore what you already know. Consider eating less meat and be a reducitarian. Save our planet, improve your health, and save a lot of animals. Thank you so much. Uh, save a lot of animals? You mean like not murdering that many animals? It's not about saving them, it's about not uh, paying others to murder them. You're basically conflating this. Okay, I I don't really know who this is. Uh, Brian Catman? Yes, you? You, you smart fella. Uh, I actually right now want to wanna challenge you to a debate on the ethical principle of veganism to see if you have a consistent position. And uh, I can give you the name the trait uh, in the uh, line of uh, your reasoning about reducitarianism. What is it that is true of an animal that if they were true of humans would justify us needlessly killing humans on occasions? Okay, hope that you reply to me and we can set up a debate.